Oh, it's always refreshing to start off the day. <laughs> oh, it's always refreshing to start off the day by uh, rinsing off my beans and. <laughs> well, it's always refreshing to start off the day by rinsing off my beans and. Uh, good thing about the off season, I got a little more privacy to do it. I got this whole campground to myself, but I'm gonna get uh, a sausage stew going here before I head out on a hike. Uh, so I already pre-cooked the sausage last night. It tends to be kind of fatty, and I didn't want that in with my stew as well. I'll add in some parsley. Carrot, diced tomatoes, the beans, a handful of spinach, beef broth, salt, pepper, garlic powder, and smoked paprika. Since the meat is cooked, I'll uh, only give it four hours and I'll do a delayed start so that it finishes at 5.30. One, Two, three, four. So this morning I'm trying to e-bike up this uh, Downton Creek FSR just outside of Lillooet. I think about 15 kilometers and a little over a thousand meters of gain to reach a trailhead where I want to go hiking today. But I drove the minivan up this road about uh, four years ago now. I guess they just uh, recently decided that bridge is no longer safe to uh, carry the weight of a vehicle. So a uh, good thing that uh, I managed to carry the crippling weight of my ego across that thing. But yeah, let's go, let's go do this. Uh, headed for a new area today and uh, a new summit. So I'm excited. Ever since that grizzly bear charged me back in the summer, I try to be extra cautious on the e-bike when I go around these blind curves. Just go a bit slower because if it's going to happen again, it's going to be on the e-bike. You just get going at good speed and next thing you know, you're face to face with one. But I got my bear spray and it's uh, easy to reach. I can do a quick draw if needed. And uh, when I hit that grizz in the face, I mean it instantly emptied its bowels. That's a pretty good sign that you've really scared it and uh, encountered it. A second time in the day later on and it uh, didn't even bother coming close to me it just uh, it knew to avoid humans at that point which is a good thing I biked 14 kilometers and uh, climbed thousand meter the e-bike battery is dead it really drains fast when I'm climbing hard like that good thing it's all coasting back on out of here to the van it's really windy today I'm testing a new microphone for the smartphone hopefully it sounds good those clouds are really moving fast not sure I'll be able to fly the drone today. So I left Whitehorse about four days ago. I've just been uh, driving a whole lot lately. I learned that uh, I'm not I'm not cut out to be a long haul trucker. That is one grueling task. It didn't help that I did it all in silence. My radio is broken. I know I could set up like a Bluetooth speaker or some earbuds and play music and podcasts off my phone. But whenever I'm driving, I put my smartphone in the back or else I get tempted to look at it while I'm driving which is a very bad thing and uh, I also don't like using navigation like Google Maps or any of that I just go by memory and figure things out as I go it's more fun but yeah 16 hours of silence <laughs> it's like road meditation you get real comfortable inside your own skin with all those awkward memories There's a lot of peaks out here. Maybe I can get two or three of them today, but I wouldn't mind getting back to the van in decent time because uh, still have to do more driving tonight. If I can reach Squamish, I'll be good, then uh, be set up to get on a ferry the next day to meet up with family for a bit. But yeah, I just <laughs> just really needed to stop and get out for a hike. Rocco and myself were starting to feel really cooped up. So I'll go up through there and do Linus Peak that across the shoulder and also uh, Contralto Peak, then uh, come back down through there. Earned her toi, triple play, should be fun. I almost packed in my snowshoes for this, I'm glad I didn't. I could see the peaks were all covered in snow, but it poured rain all night, and I think it washed them clean. You'd expect the opposite to happen this time of year, it is like strangely warm. I hardly need this toque on. Yeah, so far this has been a friendly route. Nice trail, no bushwhacking. Got some talus to climb up here to the summit, but not bad. Just like a staircase all the way up this thing. 
a little concerned once I crest this ridge, I'm gonna get blasted by wind. These clouds are just pouring over the ridge line. There's our first peak of the day. It's uh, windy as heck. Let's uh, throw the drone up, see what happens. Hopefully uh, I don't lose it forever. Traversing that ridge line took longer than expected. It was uh, less than straightforward. I don't think I had enough time to figure out the third summit, so I'm headed back to the van for my uh, succulent, slow cooked meal. Then uh, I gotta get on the road again, but just uh, lightly scratched my mountain itch today. Hope we still got time to get out for more before the snow really starts dumping. Well, that is my definition of a good day. I love exploring these BC FSRs, and there's nothing like coming back to the van, having a hot meal, ready to go. Mmm. Delicious. I was looking on iOverlander for a place to sleep tonight. It would be really nice to just stay right here, but I gotta keep motoring and close in on the distance. So it looks like uh, the Walmart in Squamish could be uh, the place to go tonight. I don't normally go any further south than Pemberton, like Whistler, uh, Squamish, Vancouver. It's all way too busy for me. So why didn't I take the ferry from uh, Prince Rupert to Port Hardy instead? I tried to book it in online, but since my van is over height, I could not make a reservation. I tried to call. There was like a one hour wait, so I just gave up and decided to uh, just drive to uh, Horseshoe Bay instead but if you managed to uh, book in an uh, overheight vehicle on that ferry let me know the details of how it all worked and maybe that'll help me out next time I try to do it but I'm gonna finish up my stew then uh, I'll be on the road once again so I made it to the Squamish Walmart and spent the night. I was really curious to see what it was going to be like, how many vehicles were there. I'd say a little over 20 and everyone was quiet and respectful but Squamish is one of those towns where van life has really been cracked down on so you kind of wonder how much longer it's going to last and where are all these people going to go. So I'm glad I got a little video footage of it because uh, back when I was doing van life in Canmore and it was still loud. I wish I had some footage of that because uh, some nights behind the Savon along the railroad tracks there would be like a hundred vehicles there and uh, it's all gone. It's in the past, no longer allowed. But yeah, I'm on uh, my way to the island now to see family. So uh, that's the end of this episode and uh, I hope everyone is doing good and uh, I will see you in the next one wherever that is.